Did you watch the new dev video that was a couple days ago talking about how they created bosses, Archie? I did not actually. This might actually be a good time to watch that video. All right, chat. How many people have actually seen this video? Because I have not. In this episode in Forge Eternal, we focus on boss design and New World, hosted by Dave Hall, player experience lead. Dave is joined by Chad Redwiz, the AI lead designer, and Patrick Smedley. Uh, and we do have a lot of legacy bosses. Is there any boss that when you're seeing it played or you're playing it yourself uh, that you're just like, oh boy, I wish we can go back and uh, update this one? <laughs> Why do they always cut it off like that? They just cut it off right when they're laughing. Hello and welcome to Forge in Eternum, That's where we good. talk all things New World. My name is Dave, and today we're going to be talking about AI bosses. Today I'm joined with uh, our AI lead, Chad Redwitz, and our AI designer extraordinaire, Patrick Smedley. Uh, one of the first questions we have for Chad, um, can you just kind of take us over a brief overview? How do you create a boss in New World? Sure. So uh, the process generally starts with a discussion with our narrative team uh, to kind of get an understanding of the story that we're trying to tell both in the expedition and in the world. Uh, and then also a discussion amongst the designers about kind of the, the gimmick that we want to present to the players. And that's, that's kind of the unique mechanic uh, and the, the experience uh, that we want to provide to the player. Um, and then after that, we kind of get into uh, designing the specific roles that we want to uh, have the players doing through the fight and, uh, and looking at kind of our, our escalation mechanics. Um, and uh, that's really there to, to make it feel like you're, you're climbing a mountain a little bit fighting this boss. Uh, that's getting harder and harder, and uh, it's, it's leading up to this ultimate moment against them. Uh, I always love it when uh, a boss fight ends with yeah. the player just barely scraping by with a tiny little bit. Sorry, I got too excited. So I want to know what bosses uh, Chad Redwitz, which one did he work on? If he worked on all the bosses, which bosses do you guys think was designed well? Uh, something that you guys can say, hey, I really had fun killing this boss in New World. Chartist, that's a fun boss, Baldor. I swear to God, you're trolling me right now. Uh, that is by far not my favorite boss in any way, shape, or form. Thorpe is not a boss. That is a mini boss, but I guess considered boss, half of a boss, I guess, and it is very difficult. Uh, Q boss, that is... Is there a Q boss in this game? I don't really know <laughs> Project and Curses. Well, I don't really... I was like, who's the Q boss? Uh, I got an in-game title for beating the Q boss. The Stoic. This title is usable by any character in your account. Showed resolve in the face of an epic wait. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> got him! Oh my god. I swear to god. I... <sighs> Let's watch this video. After that, we kind of get into uh, designing the specific roles that we want to uh, have the players doing through the fight. And, uh, and looking at kind of our, our escalation mechanics. Um, and uh, that's really there to, to make it feel like you're, you're climbing a mountain a little bit fighting this boss. Uh, that's getting harder and harder, and uh, it's, it's leading up to this ultimate moment against them. Uh, I always love it when uh, a boss fight ends with players just barely scraping by with a tiny little bit of health left, uh, half the team dead, and then they, they triumphantly conquer the boss. So. I'm going to tell you right now that specific boss he's talking about is Anid. Anid does a very good job of eliminating at least one or two of your teammates for the first time you try it. Of course, you don't know the mechanics and it's out of control. People are sweating and you finally get them both to die at the same time. No, Harrow, get away from me! Harrow, don't kill Harrow! Don't touch Harrow! And that fun fight mechanic-wise on two different bosses and two fronts and having to kill them within 10 or 15 seconds of each other before they respawn again. It's a very fun, it's a very fun experience doing a need, not on a mutator ice dungeon for sure, not that one. But uh, the normal need is actually a fun dungeon, no, no cap. Let's continue. Um, I always love those kind of moments. Uh, and then as we're building it out, uh, you know, we start implementing, uh, we play test a ton. And, uh, 
Sometimes you uh, you write something down on design and it just doesn't work out in practice. So uh, so you gotta you gotta adjust on the fly and and find the fun in the fight. So and that's that's kind of our our general process. Um, but uh, to talk about it a little bit more, uh, Patrick, would you like to kind of talk over a, a recent boss design that we had? Yeah, sure. Uh, so one of the more recent bosses I implemented was the uh, Goliaths of the Ennead, uh, the kind of pinnacle fight in the Ennead expedition uh, that launched with Brimstone. Uh, that fight, as a lot of our players probably know by now, is a two-boss fight. So you have hey, the, uh, the Brute That's and then you right. have the Horus boss, uh, and they both kind of play very well differently. Done. So with that boss, early on, we knew that we wanted to no! kind of introduce each boss separately, so it's players had an opportunity to learn. It's not his fault. That was the th that was the one boss that I said was actually done right. It was actually fun. Uh, this is a good mechanic behavior. It's a gear check, and it's also a team check, you know, and gotta work as a together as a team to knock out all four pillars, you know, when it does that boss. This is a good boss. It's not bad. I was thinking it's a good boss. Learn the core mechanics of that boss. Uh, so we introduced the uh, the brute first to the players. He has this really kind of big charge attack where yep. he'll run towards you, and you need to, uh, as a player, kind of kite him into the obelisk in order to stop that. Yeah. Or else you're going to find the arena is you know filled with uh, fire. Um, and then after you take him down, then the Horus kind of joins the fight. He has a lot of his lasers, uh, his kind of roving sun discs, a lot of ways to hurt the player. Then his core mechanic, the uh, activation of the four obelisks, where each player needs to get in there and turn those off with their Azoth staff. Uh, that mechanic was you know, pretty challenging to implement. There was a lot of timing uh, issues we ran into, so that was one we uh, iterated on a lot, like Chad said. Uh, I think the kind of core combat that we got out of that mechanic ended up being really fun. Uh, as I'm running this, when I'm playing the game, you see players really identify that this attack is coming. Everyone kind of just hauls uh, their way over to the obelisk to turn those off as soon as they can. And if you mess up the timing there, that's gonna make that move just hurt a lot. Um, so really happy with how that turned out. And now what's really exciting there is when both of those bosses die and they come back to life, that third phase of the encounter that's just like pure chaos and watching players kind of navigate that has been fun. Um, that was something we iterated on a lot during development because we had a lot of bugs uh, with the revival of the bosses and them not coming back when we'd expect or coming back with too much health or too little health. So once we finally nailed that and got that in a good space, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah, it turned out fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It really showed and also gave people in the group something to do. They wasn't just sit there and yeah, hit the yeah. boss. You had to go and do an actual role in the, in the fight, which is something we've started to lean on a little more in our newer uh, boss fights, which is really exciting. Thank God. Uh, just uh, some other community questions from the community, uh, maybe. It's, uh, what's the hardest boss fight we have? So right now, recency bias, but the encounter that has the most uh, player kills is the Goliaths. Um, groups are averaging around six wipes on that boss before they successfully take it down. Uh, but some of our legacy bosses, uh, Olivia Marl, the caretaker. I'm going to pause it real quick. Did you just hear what he said? The Goliath wipes out teams six times average before they take out the Aeneid boss. Holy crap, I haven't seen that happen to us six times, though, on average. That's a number that literally everyone is dying left and right on. Actually, it still remains one of the most deadly bosses in the game. Uh, there's the eternal debate among I, players. I gotta go back, I'm sorry. Most uh, player kills is the Goliaths. Um, groups are averaging around six wipes on that boss before they successfully take it down. What's the second one? Uh, but some of our legacy bosses, uh, Olivia Marl, the caretaker, actually still remains one of the most deadly bosses in the game. Uh, there's the eternal debate. Who's the caretaker? Do you guys remember who the caretaker is? I'm, uh, I don't remember right now, off the top of my head. Oh, Genesis? Somehow that is considered the hardest on the legacy zone. And it makes total sense. It wipes all of you if you don't do a specific action. So those mistakes happen. I don't think it's a hard boss. I think it's a mistake boss. And I think the number one reason why it's a, bit a hard boss is because people, they want to do the one-shot style where everybody jumps into the middle and then they want to hope that the second round's enough damage. And if you keep doing that with a lot of puppies, you're just going to wipe all the time. There's always a wipe going to happen. And so, uh, yeah, I can see the caretaker being a hard one. All right. Well, let's see what else was he going to say. He said caretaker. It still remains one of the most deadly bosses in the game. Uh, there's the eternal debate among players of do we send everyone into the root cage immediately to take it down or do we send in the tank and everyone else kill the adds. Um, for everyone who thinks that we should send in the entire group, um, I personally think you're wrong. Let's play it safe and just send in the tank while everyone kills the adds. But uh, that debate, I'm sure, will continue for a while. 
Uh, and we do have a lot of legacy bosses. Is there any boss that when you're seeing it played or you're playing it yourself uh, that you're just like, oh boy, I wish we can go back and uh, update this one? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm blanking on the name now, but our, our Chartist. Boss. Chartist, yeah. there we go. Uh, he could definitely use a, another pass, perhaps. So um, he's definitely one of our earlier bosses. Uh, we learned a lot from it. And uh, yeah, maybe one of these days we'll kind of circle back. So and, you don't want to just do this? Well, you know, just, you know, just a little you know. bit more, a little, a little more uh, mechanics, a little yeah. more role action there. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe one of these days. I do think that boss though highlighted something really cool with our process, which is kind of the iteration and the collaboration we have between a lot of disciplines. Uh, when we initially designed that boss, we had his swipe attacks, but you had to run outside of the arms to get around it. And then our concept team came back with this really cool concept and this energy cracking between the arms and the broken bits. And our animator, Shogi, looked at that and goes, why don't we just break up the arm and make you run through it instead of going around it? And I think that is one of the cooler parts of the fight. And that entire mechanic came you know, from an animator looking at a piece of art going, this would be cool. Yeah, that's, that's totally true. And it's um, the, the creation of a boss isn't really a linear process. Um, like I was saying, we, we might start with, you know, looking at the lore or looking at a gimmick, but a lot of times our different departments inspire each other to do something else exactly like that. Like the animator uh, wanting to break up bits of the arms or, um, or somebody noticing that, you know, that, that barrel on the guy's back, maybe we could turn that into an attack that he grabs and throws and have it explode. So uh, there's tons of room for, for kind of development beyond just the initial concept. And I'm gonna pause it right there and I wanna talk to you guys about Chartist real quick. Chartist is, is like they were saying, the boss in Legacy, it's in Lazarus, the final boss, needs some love and they're gonna come back and look at it. How would you guys feel if the developers chose to um, make Chartist do like clear out times 10? And we're talking about pushes you all the way to the left and right of the walls with his arm coming across and his other arm coming across and does a huge push mechanic into the laser zones, into that, like, you know, those death zones on the left and right. You know, if you get pushed in there, you're dead. But then the hands break out, you know, like they were saying earlier. And so you can use that to positioning to get through. Again, it shouldn't be blocked or dodged. This should be able to push you no matter what. And if you were trying to block or if you were trying to dodge, it's going to push you like almost clear out times by 10 to the sides of the walls. And you're just yeet and you're basically now into the laser zones and hoping that you can get back without dying. Um, I think that would make Chartist more fun and less just a damage phase. Just to like, OK, let's get over this. And people will start panicking. They will start noticing the very beginning of Chartist that how much of a change it happened. Why are we getting sent to the sides? This doesn't make sense. It didn't do any damage to me. He just threw me to the side. Well, the one the laser phase happens on the left-hand side is when you start recognizing, oh my god, I'm getting melted by this laser zone. We can't get pushed anymore. Everyone panic, dodge, whatever you need to do. All right, let's continue. And it leads us to some really fun places. Uh, so we, can we talk about like our pipeline for how we get a boss from concept all the way out to our players? Yeah, sure. So uh, the process generally starts with uh, our, our initial kind of design, our pitch, as we call it, um, to other designers and our product owners um, and our narrative team uh, to kind of get buy in on it. And if everybody's uh, excited about it and they want to progress for it, um, then we uh, we do our formal write up and we start uh, uh, passing it on to our other team. So that includes our our artists who are, are building the model our animators who are, who are coming up with the unique animations uh, and the, like our intros and deaths and stuff that's, that's unique for the character. Um, and then our design team uh, starts iterating on the, on the design, uh, prototyping things out, building out the abilities and the interactions. Um, and, and that progresses until we get to a kind of a playable state and then we start doing our, our initial play tests and, uh, and just kind of really digging into feedback uh, figuring out what's fun, what's not working, what we kind of want to lean into even more. Um, and that progresses for, for a good long while until we kind of reach a, a nice solid state um, to where we can pass it on to our, our kind of finalizing teams, which are uh, VFX and sound. Uh, and uh, and they'll, you know, they'll come in and they'll, they'll polish up all the VFX and make it look beautiful. Uh, see the character in the environment itself, adjust lighting or any kind of ambience that we want to do. Um, 
and, and really kind of bring the character to life. And then, uh, and then after that, our QA team just hammers the heck out of it to try to find all the bugs, uh, exploits as we can find them, and, uh, and just anything that might break or kind of go wrong that we're, we're just not expecting. Uh, and that, that progresses all the way until we release it. And then, uh, and then yeah, and then we hopefully end up with a, a great product and a fun time for, uh, for the players. Yeah. Do you have a favorite part of that kind of development process where you feel like it just gets to like be the most fun for us as designers? Uh, man. So uh, I, as a designer myself, I, I love uh, just building out the character and seeing it kind of come to life in front of me. Uh, we start out with a lot of individual pieces, almost like building blocks. And, uh, and we might get individual ones working, uh, but then getting them all together and seeing our phases kind of flow together uh, and develop. And then obviously iterating on it and kind cool. of uh, uh, adjusting it to, to really lean into the more fun aspects. Uh, seeing that through is great. And then there's usually a little bit of a gap between when we're done implementing and when we see it again after VFX has made their pass. Um, so we start with this thing that's, you know, we're really excited about and we think, wow, this looks great. And then we see the final product. I would love to see how a designer works with a product. We're talking about like very similar to a manga artist who then basically sketches out their panels with a bunch of circles to represent that's a person. And then this is an attack move and this is a, you know, perspective viewpoint. <laughs> but yeah, it would be interesting to see the process and, uh, and then how, how it, how it looks like initially and then what the final product looks like. So if they ever wanted to share that, that'd be pretty cool. All right, let's continue. About and we think, wow, this looks great. And then we see the final product and it just looks amazing after VFX and sound have done their pass. And uh, I really love that moment too. That's that's really great. Yeah, it's always really exciting. Like with Nisha Tune, when we were play testing it uh, with our design group, you see all these kind of white circles popping up and it's, it's cool. You know, the core mechanics there are fun and challenging. Then you take that look two months later and the VFX artists have plugged in the fire and it goes from, this is cool to, holy crap, this is incredible. I'm gonna have so much fun playing this over and over again. Uh, speaking of awesome bosses, does anybody have the most exciting boss in the game? Who, who would you say that exciting is? Exciting boss. Uh, probably one of my favorites is uh, Nishtun, our uh, corrupted Naga. Um, I always just, I, I loved how that boss turned out. Uh, I think visually he's stunning. Uh, there's a lot of really fun interaction with the corrupted cores that you have to take care of, as well as the uh, the vents that are that are blowing up. Um, I think just all around that that fight just really came together really well. Yeah, I, I agree. That was a really fun one for us to design. Uh, we went back and forth with our VFX artists quite a bit on how we're going to sell the visual language of these mechanics, and the place it landed in is great. Uh, the vents when they are charging up and then about to unleash their power, you can really tell kind of the timing of how much time you have left to get out of that area. Uh, as well as just like kind of the raw power they have. Um, and the time of day shift too, when you're standing in it and it gets a little bit darker, really kind of reinforces that tell to players that like, hey, you are not standing where you need to be. You got to get out. I was a pretty big fan of the Admiral. I thought he was fun. He had a lot of different phases to him. He had to interact with the cannon and all the cannonballs shooting down on you and he's jumping up to the higher levels and you're knocking him down. I thought there was some pretty interesting uh, stages in that fight. So I think he was one of my favorite right now. Yeah, for sure. That was a serious gimmick fight right there. We did a lot of uh, unusual things in there with the hopping in the cannons and uh, the boss jumping to the, uh, the second story. Um, uh, that did turn out pretty great. It looks really cool. Um, they're talking about Barnacle's uh, boss. Uh, I think the first one you actually deal with, but he's super easy. Uh, maybe in Mutator, he's actually a lot harder. I would check him out in the Mutator zone. All right, and that brings us to the community question. Uh, we want to know, what's your favorite boss and why? What mechanic about it? What, what is the reason that you like it so much? Is it the stages or is it uh, the different roles that the players have in the fight? We'd love to know. Uh, so uh, if you want to see more of this, please subscribe, and we'll be happy to come back and answer all your questions. I'm going to pause it right there and actually answer uh, live on stream. Uh, what my favorite boss is is a need boss. Uh, giving you a a role in the party. Um, if it's a five-man dungeon, you made four people have a role taking down the towers, and then the tank basically holds the ta holds the aggro. Um, and that gave us an opportunity to actually feel like, hey, this is a five-man team working together on a boss, and it requires five people to win it. Um, then you got bosses like uh, Dynasty, where everyone's got to dodge at the same time, and then if one person just doesn't know how to iframe or it has large ass ping, you're dead because of the waves are just going to delete you, uh, or, or or your positioning or whatever uh, for the final boss on Dynasty. 
I don't know. Like, I, I, would, I want more environment effects that force the team to have to pay attention to the environment and have to pay attention to the boss and be heavily rewarded for it. But yeah, that's just my thoughts. Let's go ahead and basically continue. See you later. Take care. I gotta say, their sound... I wanted to go check out their sound design, like a Trinosaurus Rex. And you're like, woo, that's scary.